to lead to the long answer, I'll give you the short answer, which is this. They bought into the Kool-Aid. They understood what I was saying. They were willing to run through walls, dive through tables, wrap themselves up in barbed wire, set themselves on fire, then go into the crowd while on fire, wrapped up in barbed wire, bleeding with beer all over them, go up to the balcony, dive off the balcony through another human being, waiting for them to dive on top of them, lying on a table as they came off a 20-foot balcony and crashed them through the floor because, and here it is, short answer, I really believed in all of them. And that's the short answer to it. My, my job in ECW was to find an artist. If you were in this business and you viewed this business as an art, and you wanted to ply your trade as an artist, most of the people in hiring positions back at that time in this business didn't want you. It just wasn't the hiring process. The hiring process was to be six foot five, 300 pounds, be like Zeus. Remember Zeus, Tiny Lister? Remember Zeus? Oh, yeah, listen, I laughed too about it, but Zeus, Zeus was the typical, that's it, we want that, we want Zeus. Zeus comes in, he's six foot five, he's 300 pounds, WWE superstar, that's it. WCW, they wanted something else. They wanted, oh, he, well, he played college football, he played college basketball, he's an athlete. Oh, he has athletic credentials, sign him. We want athletes. We want Bill Freilich. We want, and, and listen, and, and that mentality led them to finding Goldberg. WWE didn't recruit Goldberg. WCW recruited Goldberg. So let's give them a little credit on searching for athletes. It, apply, it does apply today. I think you need a athletes who are showmen, of which Goldberg was, and there were a lot of athletes that didn't make it in WCW, but that was one that did. But that's what they wanted, athletes. College football, college basketball. This guy was going to try out for the Atlanta Braves. He's 260 pounds. Let's bring him in. WWE wanted six foot five, 300 pounds. I wanted everybody else. I wanted people that they didn't want. And I'd say to the person, why don't they want you? I'm five foot eight. Okay. So you're five foot eight. What else? Well, I'm five foot eight and uh, I don't have really any athletic credentials. Right? And, and I, I can't wear stilts in the ring, so they're not going to hire me. Okay. Can you wrestle? Yes. What can you do? I can out-wrestle anybody that you have in your locker room. Hmm. How? Because I'm, I'm an amateur wrestler. I just didn't go for any titles. But I also know judo. I know Kempo Karate. I'm studying this kind of new, new age fighting called uh, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh, what else can you do? I can choke any <laughs> you got here out. <laughs> oh. So, what's your name? Pete. I, but, but, but what do they call you? Well, they call me Taz. And he'd, you know, and he'd look me in the eye and I'm thinking, man, this dude can kick my ass, you know? You know, and, uh, and, and he made me believe in him. Same way Tommy Dreamer made me believe in him. Same way Joey Styles made me believe in him. And these were people who deserved a break, who, who earned a break, who would, have, who would have shot to the top with any sort of opportunity and would not be given that opportunity. So I believe, hey, think about this. And by the way, it's not that I'm, I'm like, you know, these people that hype all these accolades on me, oh, he's a visionary, he's a genius. Really? Let me point out to you how I'm not a genius, how I'm not a visionary, how, how, how it's just that I was unstupid. <laughs> So you laugh, but I'm serious. I'll, sh I'll show you how. I get all this credit because I put a microphone in front of Steve Austin and said, are you pissed off? Hell yeah, I'm pissed off. <laughs> God damn, kid, I'm pissed off as hell. Talk about it. Oh, God damn, I could talk about it. I could talk about it? Talk about it. Really? Yeah. 
Okay, goddamn, I'm Steve Austin and I'm pissed off. Now, am I a genius for putting a microphone in front of Steve Austin and say, talk about how pissed off you are and just direct it towards somebody that you want to work with. I don't care who you want to work with. Mikey Whipwreck, the Sandman, work with anybody you want in my locker room. But at the end of saying how pissed off you are, say, and I'm going to direct it at that some bitch and he's the first one on my list. Right? That makes me a genius? Yeah. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. It makes Eric piss off a stupid for firing Steve Austin. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of brains to put a microphone in front of Mick Foley when he comes to you and says, oh, I have this idea about turning myself. <laughs> this idea about turning myself into the heel and kind of criticizing the ECW fans about how, how far they're pushing us to be hardcore wrestlers. I want to be the anti-hardcore guy. Bang, bang. <laughs> now, WCW had Mick Foley. I'm sure he pitched them ideas. Did they listen? No. Are they geniuses? No, they're stupid <laughs> I said, that's a hell of an idea, Mick. Well, what are my boundaries and what I talk about? <laughs> boundaries? <laughs> In ECW? None. <laughs> say whatever the f you want to say. <laughs> Draw me some money. Make me look good. Okay, I'll put... A lot of thought into it. We'll see you tomorrow in the studio. Bang, bang. <laughs> now, in all humility, genius? No, I'm just not a stupid <laughs> So that's why these guys would buy into these speeches because I believed in them, because they gave me something to believe in. It wasn't unwarranted. It wasn't that I was thrusting on top of them. How could you not believe in Steve Austin? How could you not believe in Mick Foley? How could you not believe in Tommy Dreamer? How could you not believe in Taz? How could you not believe in the public enemy? How could you not believe in Joey Styles? How could you not believe that the Sandman can captivate an audience simply by standing in the middle of a crowd while his music is playing and the audience is singing his song and he's smashing a beer can into his head and bleeding before the match ever even begins. And he's willing to do that for you, to make you go home and say, hey man, did you go to the ECW show? Yes, I did. What was the best match? Best part of the show wasn't even a match. What was it? The Sandman's music played and I was singing it and he was standing next to me and he bled all over me and he's smashing the beer can and my friend who's 15 got drunk as Your big show starts to get up and he goes, He just completely no-sold it. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, did you just yourself? 